Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. Uh, welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm well, thank you. I hope you're well too. I'm well. All right. Question? Question. Today we have a question from Super Miss Blue Eyes. Oh. Hi. Hello. Thanks for your question. Uh, okay, so Super Miss Blue Eyes is referring to Gran who died mm. and um, couldn't eat before death like had stopped oh. eating and so was very emaciated yeah and the question is just around what can you do to uh, make that look more natural and what do you do in that situation if somebody is really emaciated uh, and like sunken yeah and, and the family want to have a view and not remember yeah like yeah so way. so let's start with the reason somebody might look like that in death because mm. I think there's a misconception that everybody looks different looks when like they that. die. Yeah. And they don't, do they? They don't even look a different colour most of the time. No, and most of, if it's a natural death and nothing major trauma, traum, traumats? Traumats. Traumats. That's a new word. That's a new Clever word. you. Clever me, traumatic death. Yeah, we usually look... Similar. Very similar. But... but I, they're all my makeup on. <laughs> Unless you died with your makeup on. Of course. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes, because of a few different reasons, yes. people will look uh, quite severely drawn and mm. like more like cow than not. Yeah. You, we can get people that do actually look like this without actually exposing the skeleton, you know, uh, yeah. due to severe dehydration and emaciation. Yeah. Okay, so if they stopped eating before death. That's a um, big one, yeah. If they die of cancer often? Yeah, often cancer patients um, can be very emaciated. It depends on the cancers and the drugs and, you know, the kind of how long palliative and all of that, yes, cancer. And you mentioned malnutrition. And then the other one is if they're not found for a while. Yeah, yeah. Another one is where we're starting to... Uh, the decomposition setting in and we're starting to dehydrate and the skin can come down because it can actually happen very quickly within a few days but still have the viewing and everything so but we need to work on that person to make them look uh, more peaceful okay so what do they look like when they're like that can you go through sort of maybe the face structure and talk about a little bit like what you see when somebody is say emaciated so emaciated so i will go through it they are very much like apart from where we've got Calvin here, you would see the eye sockets more prominent. Obviously, your eyes are still there, but the eyes would be sunk right back. And I'm talking where they actually, you could probably put water in their eye sockets and it wouldn't come out. So the eyes are sunk right back and the eyelids are actually wide open. And it doesn't matter what you do, they will not close because they've really dried out and so the actual eyelid retracts doesn't it it retracts mm -hmm. right back and the eye retracts right back because there's no fluid left anyway so you've got this very definite ring around uh under the skin mm -hmm. and it's very prominent what Obviously, happens on the cheekbones the cheekbones you will see how you see how you've got you 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 can see Carl's cheekbones there. Well, I've got a little bit of a puffy face because I've always had little cheekies. But, you know, if I'm emaciated, my cheekbones are here, the same place, and you will get that extreme dint in here in, um, where Carl is as well. And also your temples. You know, if you touch your temples and squeeze in, you'll feel that indentation in your skull here. And the skin really retracts down and it, it's like your skin is being vacuumed onto your skull. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. so that's a good way to describe it. And sucked it right back and it's gone woof. Mm -hmm. And all you can see is the actual structure of your skull sticking through. Okay, so as a mortician, when somebody's lying on the table with that and there's going to be a viewing, what mm -hmm. is your aim in the work that you're about to do to that person? What are you aiming to do? Uh, well, my aim is to rehydrate mm -hmm. and one uh, to rehydrate to one to, to close the eyes and the mouth because also the lips retract as well. So that they look like they can't stick mm -hmm. to the top of your, uh, like your gums. Uh, we need that uh, person to be not lifelike because we're not, like you say, this person is deceased, but we want to make them more... Um, viewable as in peaceful not scary to look at yeah um, yeah definitely get away from these 
defined lines that we have once we deceased them. We're all drawn. It's more so natural. A, a much natural look without overdoing it because if we go the opposite and poof the face up and you and she goes in to see like your nan when you said she was really um dehydrated and emaciated then suddenly she's got this you know cheeks like me you know and yeah. like big then that's overdoing it so we've got we've got to make the person look you know um peaceful and natural so yeah definitely natural so photographs always good as well bring a photograph oh, in okay so you, know, you can see get, what they were before yeah, they got sick so you've got exact you know mm. how they looked just before they got into that emaciated thing not a photo of when they were 20 and they're now 90 because that's not going to work because they are different so yeah that's a really good way as well to know exactly at what stage and how far you can you know, make that person look more natural. In, in, so I guess the aim is to take the trauma from the family so they don't uh, remember the person as they were in death, they remember them as they were in life. Yes, that's exactly right because they've seen them like that and that's their last image. And that last image of seeing all that uh, skill, skeletal bones like protruding from your face is quite traumatic. Yeah. It is, you know, it is yeah. traumatic. And often the family, members of the family have been with that person during the lead up to their death and their yeah. death. So that's right. And that's all okay. they can think of and remember. Yeah. Because the, they're, they're in that tra traumatic stage of losing somebody, watching them uh, getting worse and worse and worse and, and deteriorating because she's, the nan's not eating, you know, properly and she's not uh, getting any food in. So, yeah. It, it, it's traumatic to see. So we want that trauma to to go and so we, the family can say their last goodbye and have a better memory. Yeah, cool. Of that. All right, so how do you do it? Okay, so there's one way we could do it in one big field would buy embalming. Embalming is what we do is uh, it hydrates the body. It uh, plumps up the skin again. And it brings back that natural look to the face and the features and the hands um, instead of it all being like really emaciated. So embalming's one and, you know, we've done videos on embalming and how I'll that works. I'll point to one there. Yeah, so that that's a quick way. But if the family don't want the body embalmed, um, I'll do a lot of hypodermic work. So what, what do you mean by hypodermic? Hypodermic needle? So I'll do a needle in a syringe, a normal needle in a syringe, just small ones that you see in everyday doctor's surgeries. Right, okay. Yeah. So, so where do you put them? So I would inject the eyelids. So I would draw my, uh, my solution up. And because we want to do, we, we want to moisturise and we want to preserve a little bit, but I'm not embalming, so I would mix two chemicals together in my syringe. I'll put it in a bowl, I'll mix my chemicals, which is a humectant, humectant which is a moisturiser. It's basically a very heavy moisturiser, but that has no preservative in it. It's not an embalming chemical. And then I'd put a really mild embalming chemical in with the word I can't say it has in it. L l lan lanolin. Lanol that's the word. It has that added. Sheep fat. Yeah, so it gives that nice, soft. <laughs> what is it? Sheep fat. Oh, is that, is that what that is? Yeah. I didn't know that. You used to put it on your boobs when you were breastfeeding if you had cracked nipples. Really? Mm -hmm. I've never had a baby. I was going to say I've never had nipples, but I was like, I've never had a baby. We digress very quickly here. So sorry about that. Lanolin. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So it's, well, that's why, because it's it's full of moisture. So that's really good. So I put this in the syringe and I would inject. Now, when I'm injecting, so we've got, we're going into the eye socket here. I'm actually going... So you actually go in the eyeball? Or um, in... At the minute, I'm going into the eyelid. So I'm okay. going down with my syringe in the corner of the eye, just under the skin of the bottom lid. Okay. And as I start to inject, because I push my needle from one end to the other, I draw my needle out as I'm injecting in. So what that does, and I can see the fluid... It spreads it. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. right. It, it comes up and what you've got to do is a tiny bit at a time because if you put too much in you can't take it out right so it's just a little bit of a time and i'll massage that gently so that fills that out and i would fill that out and do the same with the top lid 
So now my lids are going to close right. because I've rehydrated them so the eyelids are going to close. But we're still going to get the eyes sinking right back here because the eye is white, flat, mm -hmm. back, no fluid. So what I'll do then, a lot of people don't like eyes and <laughs> inject anything and, about eyes. And my husband hates eyes, so he'll tell me, don't want to know if you've injected any eyes today, Tracy. I'll go, okay. But I did. <laughs> <And it'll... laughs> so what I'll do, I'll get my uh, little needle and it, I'll go into the whites of the eye, in the right in the corner here, into the back of the eye. And then again, just slowly injecting that chemical. So that just draws the eye back to a normal little eyeball. Mm -hmm. And plumps it up. Plumps it back up. So now I can close my eye and we have an eye. But I will put my eye caps in. But with my eye caps, I'll put a lot of moisturiser on the eye cap. Because that also just keeps that... Uh, inside lid moisturized too all right cool. so it's going to help okay with the hydration you know okay so we'll do that lips the lips i will inject and in, i'll go into each corner so i'll start in one corner right in the corner and my needle will go right to the middle to your first little arch here and again i will inject that fluid while i'm pulling the needle down mm -hmm. so i'm pulling the needle down injecting up so there's just fluid coming in. So it looks a bit like when you go and get your fillers in uh, the, the salon, the beauty salon, wherever you get your fillers and things like that. I haven't had fillers, but, you know, you've seen it on the TV. And So, but again, I don't want to, to have the lips you know, big lips coming with someone out. who hasn't had big lips. Uh, so yeah. all I'm doing is putting their shape back. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. I'm not exaggerating the shape. I'm just putting the shape back. So... Down that side and then down that side, I would inject. And then again into the corners here, I would inject. Again to the middle, drawn, drawn. After I've done that, what I do do is then inject hair, a hair. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because them bits there are so flat. And then you've got these nice lips that look normal. And then we've got this bit that looks like mm. and you've okay. got a line. Yeah. So that hydrates that bit there to give that perfect mouth Lip. to sit mm -hmm. in so it sits correctly. So while I'm round the mouth here and the chin's needing any uh, work, I'll go inside. So I'll yeah. take my needle inside and work just mm -hmm. just like that, injecting just a little slight bit, massaging so this can then puff up that. And while you're also in the mouth? Um, what am I in the mouth? Oh yes, of course. Yeah, you, yeah. Good one. I've got it written down. <laughs> I'll use um I'll use uh, what we call it embalming putty. So this is a it's a putty. It's like it's like your art clear stuff, but it's got a bit of a little embalming chemical in it. So it's a preservative and a moisturizer too. Because if you put anything inside, like that's a clear, it'll dehydrate. And we don't want dehydration. Right, but the thing is, not what you're putting in, but how you put it in. Yeah. So it's in a corking gun. So it's you like, know, like when you put silicon around your bathroom. Yeah. So Corking gun. Yeah, and that's, in the mouth. And that's what um, the embalming putty comes into a tube with a long nozzle on it, exactly the same. The nozzle's big, so I can get the nozzle right up inside the mouth. Exactly like, like you see, it's a corking gun with the nozzle on. It's go right inside the mouth with my. So it actually goes in the mouth. It doesn't go under the skin. No, it goes oh. inside. So I pull my aneurysm hook to pull the mouth open put the cork and gun inside and squeeze and squeeze and we can get right up inside here up into these cheekbones here and the beauty with the embalming putty is it's more moldable and it doesn't set hard it does set a bit but it can still be molded so I'll put a little bit in and got my photograph I'm doing that and so now I've got the shape of the, the cheeks without having big fat cheeks like mine mm -hmm. temples you in, don't have fat cheeks yeah <laughs> The Lord's had flatcheeks. Um, the temples, again, the needle will go in to the bottom area of the temple and I'll draw it out, massaging up, and then I'll go into the top end here, inject and massage it down till we bring them out. But remember, our temples are slightly hmm. dented anyway, yeah. so I don't want to bring them out so they go. Big golf balls. <laughs> they have these lumps on the side. That's, a, That's just So, weird. again, it's all about. How mm. much solution we put in, and you've got to be very careful, and we just do it a bit at a time because you can always add more. You just can't take it out once it's in. So, yeah. What so, do you do for the ears? Uh, for the ears, again, 
um, inject inside the ear to go down into the earlobe because it's these mm -hmm. bits that usually go so inside in uh, injecting here and also behind the ear we can get in to do the top end of yep. the ear cool so it's about hiding everything in you know because you've got you're going to make these little needle marks everywhere because you've got the little hy hypodermic syringe and you're going in with your needle everywhere all over the face so you're going to put makeup on you're going to have little drips of blood drips of like not the environment chemicals oh, just coming gonna out. dribble out because... right so what do you do about that uh, so we've got our mortuary glue so it's a little tube of glue it looks like a little super glue but it's especially made for mortuaries and all you do is put a dab of this glue in every spot that you've put the needle in so and and that sets hard and it's clear seals it and it seals it instantly so, so there's fluid no doesn't come out fluid again. leakage or anything like that so now we've got this hydrated person that uh, features are back to a normal you know more you know pleasant look for the family to view more peaceful um less traumatic obviously we have made them alive we've just made them look very natural and as much next to the photograph as possible without looking like carl because we don't want them to look sorry carl but you know it's more Poor about carl. i know it's more about just giving back that um you know I taking the trauma out of the death. The, yeah, the, the way uh, taking the trauma out of the look of the person the at look, death. That's right, and and making it more of a, a, a nice final goodbye because you'll get your goodbye, which is much nicer than what you've just witnessed over the past weeks and month as the person deteriorates, and then eventually, you know, your memories go back to the memories you had before you know the um, illness took the person as well. So it's about giving you that one last you know calm look isn't it yeah i, I think it's yeah. calm and i think the other thing to mention there too is often people die with their eyes and mouth open especially so, in these situations and so that's why yeah. um, the mortician does the basic face prep for everybody yeah. because it's not something that's nice to see it's not something yeah. that's comforting to see it's it's a bit scary and yeah. it's a bit uh, traumatic to see it is that. and it's not normal in life you don't go around with no. You know, it's not a normal look no, for it's anybody. Shocking to it see. is, yeah. So it's about making the person look peaceful in uh, uh, you know, better presentation than how you see people often that pass away with the mouth and the eyes open. And it's just dignity as well. I think it's all about dignity and giving that person a little bit of dignity, closing the eyes and the mouth and you know, peaceful. But if the family don't want us to do anything, I don't like at all, we won't. So again, it's always choice. You know, yeah, it's all choice. So sorry about um, your gran. Um, great question. Thank you very much for sending it in. It was a really good question. I hope that answered quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, I think well. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for your questions. We appreciate them. Yeah. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Yes. Take Til care. Bye. Bye.